So it only seems like two minutes ago since we were last down on the World Pack. Yeah, and we're lucky enough to be here again on the exclusive lake on Lake Four. There's a lot that's happened over the past couple of months, obviously with the new release of the Tracker Terminal Tackle and really excited to start using it. In terms of today, in terms of the video, yeah, we are on borrowed time. Um, they haven't yet spawned on this lake. They're currently spawning on the whole complex. There's no other members uh, on the water. There's only me and Paul's that are fishing the exclusive lake, so very lucky for that. I'm really looking forward to it. The actual plan for this session is to give you a little bit of a masterclass into my favourite rig, which is the Ronnie rig and the various different presentations and how I go about tying it, and also why I use that particular rig. The time is getting on now. Um, yeah, myself and Paul haven't got any rods out. It's going to be dark in a couple of hours, so don't even have any rigs tied up either. I'm going to tie up some Ronnie rigs now. Um, yeah, and hopefully through the night, we will have one of these special fish to show you. Okay, drop. Yeah. You all right, mate? <laughs> I'll put you on loudspeaker. Can hear you now, I think. Or oh, everyone can hear you on camera. Oh, yeah, you've got to get me on camera somehow, haven't you? Well, that's it, you've got to feature in a video, haven't you? I'm fishing your spots near enough. Here's <laughs> <laughs> what it is, mate. Yeah. It's, the lake has changed loads, so like the, the reeds have grown a lot. Um, it's the obviously. Is so green. Yeah, it's a lot green. It's obviously a lot greener now, all the trees and everything. Well, good luck, anyway. Cheers mate, enjoy your evening. Yes, and uh, keep me updated. Yeah, I will, I'll give you a bell um, tomorrow in the morning. Are you working? Yeah, I'm working, but if I don't answer, I'll ring you back at some point. Yeah, sound mate, sound. All right, dude, have a good one. Uh, take care and you, See mate. See you in a bit, mate. Bye, bye. 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 Well, that didn't take too long. Looks like a nice fish as well. Really weeded me up. We managed to get it. Well, what a wicked start to the session. Yeah, this is the uh, the first evening hasn't even gone dark yet. 32 and a half pound or 33, there or thereabouts. Wicked fish in here, absolutely stunning and buzzing. And of course, on the Ronnie Rig. Right, so a little bit of revenge, obviously, after losing two last time on the wall pack and only catching the one. Yeah, to have one straight away is absolutely buzzing. And yes, yeah, over 30 as well. So chuffed to the moon um, with that. So yeah, uh, the, the Ronnie rig. Now, I know this has been done to death. Of course it has, but sort of, I, I still get messages about sort of how I tie them. I still get questions with regards to how to tie them. So yeah, this video 
here, I'm gonna make this as basic as possible. And with regards to the Ronnie rig, for me, it's one that I would actually recommend for beginners because it is so easy to tie. It's simply just two knots and it's got some amazing anti-tangle properties as well. So in, in terms of the actual Ronnie rig, um, this is the actual rig that, that I use. Um, yeah, and it's utilizing, of course, all of the new uh, tracker terminal tackle components. Now we'll start off with the actual boom section. Now in terms of, in terms of the boom section it is personal preference. There are actually uh, three coated materials in the range and these are, are these three. So you've got a, a stiff coated braid, you've got a semi-stiff coated braid and you've got a soft coated braid. Now in terms of when I would use these for the Ronnie rig with regards to which situation. So if I was fishing over really, really hard gravel and I was getting a mega, mega drop, I would be using the, the stiff coated. Or if I was sort of fishing over a semi-firm uh, bottom with say a bait boat, I'd be using the, the stiff coated as well. In terms of my sort of everyday fishing, generally I'm between the semi-stiff uh, and the soft coated braid. I would say 70% of my fishing when I am casting, and that is most of the time, to be honest. It's very rare really nowadays when I get to use the boat, hence why I'm using it today, just come on a little bit of a holiday. Um, yeah, most of the time I'm gonna be using the soft coated braid. So that's what I use on wire side and all of those sorts of things. And um, yeah, that's amazing. Hardly ever get tangles at all. I think I've had one tangle in well over a year of using using this so yeah it's fantastic but this session i am using the semi the semi stiff so i'm going to tie a rig up with the semi stiff you tie them exactly the same way no matter if you're using the stiff the, the semi stiff or, or the coated so uh yeah we'll start with the the semi stiff make sure i've got the right one Okay, and to begin with, I, I, I do like quite a long rig, um, particularly with, with, with the Ronnie rig. So I'm gonna take around about 16 inches of this. And obviously just trim that. And this is basically gonna act as the, as the boom section. Obviously the great thing with the Ronnie rig as well is that you can just tie a load of these in advance and obviously you can just swap and change the hook as, as, well, as and when. So the next thing that you'll need is a size 11 ring swivel. And this is where you're obviously gonna put the, the hook. Just tie this with a, with a figure of eight granny knot. It's a really strong knot, it never goes, but the key thing with this, I don't want a massive loop. I want the loop, sort of the knot really, really tight to the air, to the size 11 ring swivel. I have done a few tank tests where I've done longer loops and shorter loops. With longer loops, it can sit up really, really high, and that's the last thing you want. Um, obviously, you can get away with it with a stiff material because it won't sit up as much, but with a soft or a semi-stiff coated braid, you want that loop really, really tight to that curve. I still like the loop with that little bit of extra movement, hence why I keep it. But yeah, I certainly don't want it long at all. Now to get it short, just tie a really small figure of eight. Once you've got it round that, that swivel, instead of just pulling it, I will definitely just push that forward to begin with. And that's just gonna shorten that knot down. Just grab your tag end and tighten that first then tighten the rest down. And basically what that leaves you with is a really, really short little loop and you can make that even shorter once you put the putty on to obviously counterbalance your pop-up. And then the next thing that I'm gonna mount on is an anti-tangle sleeve. I'm using this with a leg clip and using the, uh, the quick chain swivels as well. And this just means one, I can change them really quickly but hence the name anti-tangle sleeve, it massively helps uh, with, with tangles because basically the sniffness of this anti-tangle sleeve basically allows it to kick away on the cast. Now the actual length, I'm fishing these at the moment at around about 11, between anywhere between 10 and 11 inches and the hook holds have been incredible uh, this session. I've been really, really pleased with them. So all I'm gonna do at the other end is tie another figure of eight loop knot. Again, make this one as small as you possibly can. So you're just looping over 
and then tighten down. Trim off the excess. And then just push that anti-tangle sleeve onto the top. And basically that is the, the boom section all complete. You can tie a load of those in advance if you want. Sometimes I use, I use the same rig for at least three or four sessions, you know, before I, I feel like I need to swap and change them. And that, that is the beauty of, of the Ronnie rig. The next thing I'm gonna do is just add a couple of blobs of putty. I'll put one over this knot, um, and that's obviously just to, to counterbalance a pop-up. And then I will put one around about three quarters of the way up. And the reason why I do that now, particularly this session because I'm using the boat and I'm not feathering it down. So basically this will drop flat like that. That little bit of added putty will just help it to get that putty part will go first and then this second bit will go last. And it just ensures that everything's obviously kicked away. And that is the boom section done. Now in terms of the hook, I'm using the, the Klinger BPX. Um, why am I using the X? It's extremely weedy out here, so it, just for added safety, the last thing I want is, is a hook opening up on me. I've, I've never had any of these hooks open up on me, but just for added safety, because I'm having to bully them in, I'm using the X version. Now, once you've got your hook, the next thing you'll need is some two mil shrink tube. Now, if you do know about Ronnie rigs, of course, you could use a, a kicker but this is basically just going to cover the hook. When it is extremely weedy, I do prefer to use shrink tube. Um, the reason why, it just sits firmer and also it, it guarantees that, that that's never ever going to come off. So you're just going to thread that onto the back of the hook and then put that onto the actual Ronnie swivel. In terms of which way do you put the Ronnie swivel, for me, it, it, it doesn't bother me. I've never ever had uh, any issues with, with carp's mouths at all, ever um, putting it obviously the way that I do. So once you've got your shrink tube down, you don't want to put the shrink tube all the way over that swivel because you still want the double movement of that swivel. So just leave a little bit of a gap. Then all I do, and this makes it really stiff, so rather than steaming it, hopefully I can do this with the wind, um, rather than steaming it, I'll just get a lighter and it just shrinks it like so. I'll just manipulate that just to follow the bend of the hook. You don't want it super aggressive because you're just going to narrow that gape otherwise. And then you're almost done. From there, all you need is just a, uh, a micro rig swivel. That's where you're going to mount your pop-up. Just thread one of them onto the hook. And then the final thing is just a hook bead. Now the positioning of the bead is really, really important. Now in terms of the positioning that I want, I like it sort of in between the barb and the point. So sort of more towards the barb, um, but not right on the bob because it does end up a little bit too low. And that's the actual Ronnie rig done. All I do now obviously is just steam it, get it nice and straight, and then it's obviously time to, to mount your pop-up. Now, in terms of the pop-ups I'm using, I'm just using match the hatch. This time of year, they've been hammered on brights now, so they're, they're very close to spawning. So most of the fish in this lake have probably been caught a couple of times already on bright pop-up. So a match hatch one, I am fishing the edge in one of the spots as well. So that duller one, I think the, there's no fear there at all. So that is ready to go out on the lake. So in essence, that is how I tie my pop-up Ronnie presentation. It's done me brilliantly ever since I've used this. I've been using this for around about seven or eight years now. And um, yeah, for 90% of my fishing, this is the rig that I will use. It never ever tangles. If you've never used a Ronnie rig before, if you're unsure how to tie it, I hope that has helped. <laughs>
better be something on that. Well, what an absolutely stunning fish. Jet black, lovely scaly mirror, absolute wood carving, you couldn't ask for a better one. Absolutely buzzing. Yeah, testament to the new hooks and the new hook lens, really holding firm in that weed. Absolutely buzzing. Revenge is sweet. Let's get her back. So it's turned into a really, really good session. We haven't been here yet for 24 hours. I know I keep saying it, but the fish are absolutely stunning in here. So next up in terms of the Ronnie rig tutorials that I'm doing in this session, I'm gonna show you how I set up a Ronnie rig for when I'm fishing wafters. So without further ado, let's get a slip back. Now in terms of my next presentation for the Ronnie rig, and again, I'm not gonna show you how to tie this one because I've literally just shown you how to do it. And it's uh, near enough, exactly the same. And this is how I use a Ronnie rig for a wafter. Yeah, so you, you can use the Ronnie rig for, for everything from pop-ups to wafters really. Um, the only subtle thing that I do differently is that instead of having the, the ring on the bottom here, I just cut that ring off just using the, um, the pliers for on the crimp tool. So just cut that ring off and then just tie your Ronnie rig as normal. Now, when I am using a wafter, which is not that often, but when I do fish more commercial fisheries, say like Tobba, for example, where um, obviously there's no weed and it's really clear, I love to use a wafter and that's when I will use it. So when it's clean, hard ground. Now, if that is the case, again, I'll still use a leg clip, but I will revert to fluorocarbon and because it's harder ground I'll go a little bit shorter. So you're looking around about six to seven inches there in terms of the boom. This is the 30 pound fluoro link. Um, again just two figure of eight loop knots at the top and at the bottom and again two tiny small blobs of putty. When I am using a wafter though I don't want a lot of putty at all it's just a tiny 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 bit just to cover that knot. I will use a kicker this time round. In terms of the hooks, um, you could still use a, uh, a clinger hook, which is one that I've got on here from a previous session. But my personal preference to use when I am using a wafter is actually a size four wide gape. And that is basically how I set up a runny rig for a wafter. Not that popular of a presentation, but I've always found the hook holes to be incredible. Yeah, give that a go with a wide gape, uh, size four, and I'm sure you will catch a few fish on it.
So all of these fish are actually coming from the same spot, just under sort of a, an overhanging willow tree that you could never ever cast to. There's just no way you can get through those, uh, through those branches. Obviously everything's nice and safe. But yeah, absolutely buzzing. What a lovely dark jet black common this one is. Another absolute stunner from the one pack. In, Paul, if you can bring it to me, bring it to me. She's in, mate. Well done, Bella. Well done. Yes. Lovely. What you lovely? I thought that was lovely. I know. <laughs> Well done, fella. Beautiful fish, that isn't it? Yeah, good. Yeah, what an absolute stunner. Yeah. Well, we're putting there on a good one to come from the middle. Let's get some photos done and stuff her back. Now the final thing, and I've mentioned this once already, the, the great thing about the Ronnie rig, of course, is that you can just swap that hook really quickly, obviously after, after having a fish. Couldn't be easier. Now with a kicker, of course, it's gonna be slightly quicker, and I'm just using shrink tube. Now, to actually swap your hook out, keep all your components, you know. I break every single rig down after the session. I just keep all my old rigs sort of in a box, and then, um, yeah, and then I break everything down uh, at home after the session or af after a few months and I just keep everything. Now, in terms of how you do this, the first thing you need to do if you are using a bob hook, because otherwise you'll, um, if you want to reuse the bead, if you, if you move it with the barb, you're going to have issues there. And also if you're using a kicker and if it's still got the barb on, you're going to rip the kicker as well. So in terms uh, of, the, of the hook, just crush that barb just bob it into the small uh, part of the actual crimp tool. Then all you do, take off that bead. Obviously take off your, your hook bait or your swivel. And then all I'm gonna do now is just cut, just with the braided scissors, just a snip with the, um, with the shrink tube, just pull that. Just tear it off 
and that's basically all the boom section good to go. So all I then need to do is just go through that process again of um, cling a hook on, shrink tube, shrink it down, bob your bait on, and then your hook bead, and then you're done and you're away and you can obviously get it out into the lake straight away. Oh, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Oh. <sighs> One just washed in that, you know, the little little holy bit. Yeah. When you were gone. Right. Go, let's run along a bit and get on to me, mate. Yeah. I think with this colder wind, it could could bear well for the middle tonight. I think. Yeah. Days. I have, I've got a knife and fork there, mate. There you go. I've put a lot more bait out there tonight on one rod, just to see if it works. Just on one. Do you want some chilli sauce? I don't know. Put a bit more bait out. Have you? Can't make chips, don't you? No. Can't beat northern chips. No. Oh, right. Set us up for the night. Are you doing the washing up? Yeah. Cheers, mate. Right? Have a good job. What about my fork? <laughs> yeah. I'll sort it. That was lovely, eh? Right, well, what a cracking way to end the session. All of these fish, of course, have come to Ronnie Riggs and every single one has been absolutely nailed. None of them have been coming off. Yeah, and this one coming from the middle on our final day, final morning, they've yeah, got to be off in an hour. So thank you very much for watching. Um, yeah, incorporate all of those tips and tactics with the Ronnie Rig into your own fishing and I'm sure it will help you improve your air take to land ratio.